Hi, this is Lance from LangChain. We're continuing our Langsmith evaluation series focused on data set splits. So let me start by giving kind of a motivation for why we might want to use data set splits. I have a RAG app that I've been testing throughout this series focused on the LangChain expression language documentation. Now, very recently, we updated those docs from v0.1 to v0.2. So what's going to happen now is I have a, a eval set of 20 questions related to v, v0.1 docs that I now want to store as a split. And I want to see if I create an app using these newer v0.2 docs, are they backwards compatible in terms of evaluation with my existing eval set? Or do I need to change my app to load information maybe from other sources? Because basically my worry is when we upgrade the docs, things may have shifted around. So what I was loading from here uh, may be insufficient now with these v0.2 docs. So basically my concern is that the data loading is a bit different and I may have regressed in my existing eval set with this data set upgrade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm in my data sets here. I'm gonna create a new data set. I'm gonna select a CSV. I'm gonna pull this in. So this is my existing uh, data set. So this is L LCEL question answer and I'm gonna call this splits. Um, splits for LCEO QA uh, RAG QA. I'm going to call it that. It's a key value data set. You can see my input and output fields, and that's great. So I create this data set. Nice. That's all done. Now, here's where things are kind of interesting. I'll move this over here. So I have 20 questions here. I'll open this up so we can look. Um, 20 questions here are related to uh, are, are from my original data set. So that's all these guys. So this is my initial uh, eval set that I've been using historically th throughout this th throughout this series related to, to RAG and Langchain Expression Language. I'm gonna add these to a split and I'm gonna create a new split. And I'm gonna call it, um, I'm gonna call it uh, LCL uh, V0.1 to, to identify that these uh, question and answer examples were taken from the original v0.1 docs. Um, cool, so now I have this split that's been created right here. Now I can go back, and this is my original. So this is um, the original set of 25 examples. Now I have five new examples, which you can see down here. Um, cool, so that's these. These are examples that I've added um, I'm going to call this LCEL v0.2. So these are five examples I just very quickly put together that are on that main page of the v0.2 docs. So it's kind of like a test. These should definitely work reasonably well because I created them newly. My bigger question is, do I see regression on the initial split? So right now, what I have here is two data splits. So one, these are five questions I put together pretty quickly based upon the newer structure of the docs. Um, it's kind of like a test. So this is actually what the new structure of the docs looks like. This is the new landing page for LangChain Expression Language. Um, and you know, it's, it's pretty nice. It has like lots of rich information here. That's great. Now here is the old landing page and it's just different, right? Different in structure. This old landing page kind of fanned out to a bunch of subsections, um, which is where my initial eval set drew all its information, right? So if I kind of zoom back out, what do we have here? We have two splits from my data set. This LCEL V01 is my new, is, is my initial set of questions, my initial 20 questions. Um, and this LCEL V2 are five new questions that I derive from this newer version of the docs. So this is kind of like my earlier original eval set. This is a new eval set. Okay, but they're all related to language expression language. So I'm just going to store them as two splits within this project. Cool. So I've go ahead and I've created a rag app here. That's all set. I have my rag bot. Now we've used this previously. That's all set. Um, we can kind of skip through some of this. And the key point is simply this. Right now, all I need to do is I can just take this, this data set name here. Cool and I can kick off an evaluation, I can specify the two splits I wanna work, great. So both evaluations ran, 
I ran one on the newer split. I ran, I ran the other on the older set of questions, my, my original set of email questions. Um, so cool. Here's the two results. I can see the split names here. So this is V2 or the newer ones, V1 or the older ones. Performance is a lot worse on the older ones. It looks fine on the new ones. So what this tells me is I can investigate this a little bit more deeply and I can see that performance is pretty bad on my original uh, set of uh, eval question answer pairs. And what this kind of would tell me is, okay, I need to do a little bit of work to make sure that my document loading within the new doc structure, um, as you can see what we do right here, we should then make sure that this is actually gathering all the information necessary to actually perform well um, on our individual eval set. So if you actually go to the docs here, we can see the doc structure has changed a lot. So it's very possible that we're no longer kind of getting the right documentation or pages necessary to answer all the questions that are relevant. So this kind of thing would be really important if, for example, I have a production app that's loading from, you know, set of documentation, the documentation structure changes. I want to actually determine, oof, how much of regression do I see with this documentation change? And how do I then need to modify uh, my data loading to, um, to actually make sure that I have full coverage on the questions in my original eval set? So that's kind of a good example of where you might use splits. Also things like partitioning, you know, test examples from training examples, if you're doing fine tuning, is another very kind of very classic application for using splits. Um, but anyway, this really just shows the, how you can actually set them up using the UI really easily. Thanks.